welcome to another video week four i think it is our video four of the weekly gardening roundup we are on 78 percent humidity and 12.6 degrees centigrade or celsius i never know which one to say i've literally just spoken to you five minutes ago so if you saw the end of last week's video <laughs> i had to finish it off on the saturday morning which it is now um it's about half past nine Last week was a bit all over the place for one reason and another. Um, so I wasn't able to get finished on the Friday, which I normally do. Anyway, if you saw it, the rosemary plant that had the little bug on it, after I finished the video, I tried to go and get a photo of it. And I was just about to take a photo and the blooming thing ran. In fact, I'm itchy because of it. Ran up the plant and onto me somewhere. <laughs> so I'm now letting like, you know, and you're crawling because you think you've got a spider on you. It was like a really shiny black metallic the, the metallic looked kind of gold never seen it before but i'm convinced it's on me anyway that was that didn't get a photo a proper photo in the end so we are going to get started today i've just told you guys on the other video about the polytunnel that we are working on grace is going to be busy doing that i'll show you some uh, that some of that as the week progresses if indeed we get to it this week there's no rush because we're not going to be planting in the polytunnel for a little while yet um looking forward to having the chickens outside in the plot but i'll show you those when the, when those girls are out there and i think we'll have one cockerel over there as well just to keep him away from the other one but this week we'll continue sewing this week i'll keep you up to speed um with what we've got going on there let's have a little look around i don't think anything's germinated just yet certainly nothing that i've got in the house the tomatoes and the peppers none of those have germinated just yet um but it is a nice day it was supposed to be a horrible day and it's not yet, so I'm going to get to see what I can get busy with outside, just in case it does start. Grace is doing the chickens, they're um, shouting at her. <laughs> can you hear them? Jack is doing the compost seat for me, so he is, let's go and hear you so you can hear me. Um, he's helping me turn it over, tidying it up, and seems to be trying to javel in my fork as I'm talking. Okay. So yeah, he's going to try and turn that over a little bit for me, get it a little bit tidier so it's more workable. Um, we've got the two little boys out with us, the two little dogs. Um, so they're chasing things around and just generally being um, happy out here. I've started weeding towards the back end where the, the chickens are going to go. And I'm just basically starting to work my way down. I've got to the strawberry bed. So I've just come to get the fork, not the fork, the, um, the rake. So I'm just going to start raking that over. It's actually the pathways that I'm weeding. I did get the one or two that I showed you on the screen earlier, um, but it's the pathways that I'm weeding at the moment. Um, and as I say, I got to the strawberry bed, so I'm going to see how that works now, try and pull those roots out we were talking about and get that ready. Um, and we'll go from there. I'll show you in a sec. It's a little bit windy though, so that's why I'm also with the chickens. He's struggling to hear. Grace is starting to move the chickens out here so they're happy there. We'll put a little bit more straw in actually. There isn't enough in there. And I've literally been working on this pathway here. Um, so what I've decided to do is this is just traditional mint. Um, this is, well, bless it's the grave of uh, Dwayne, one of the lambs that we lost, but this is a cherry tree. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is just put cardboard down because this becomes prolific with uh, nettles. So we'll give that a fighting chance as well. Get this tidied up around here, get these cut back. Um, oh, that needs moving too. And this is comfrey, which should come back and hopefully it'll get big enough to suppress any of the nettles that are coming through. So I'm not working on that bit just yet, working on the gravel sections. And I've just started going down here and I've got to there, to the strawberry bed. Um, but just trying to stay on top of the weeds. So you can see I've missed some straight away. Um, just trying to stay on top of the weeds so that they don't come through and end up taking over the beds. This is just moss. And took that thistle out from over there. That's what I'm up to at the moment. Uh, Mr. Rodney, what do you have there? Cheeky. You stealing eggs? Hmm? Are you stealing eggs? <coughs> ah, somebody had put it in the plant pot. Is that what happened? Is that what? cheeky? I 
that's been raked it might not look like it but it honestly has so any bits that are left are attached to the ground even the, the bits over there that look quite thick now i've been taking out the nettles so these are um what they're called the white nettles they're not the stinging ones and i've tried to get out as many as i can there's still a lot in there so that's just going to be a job that i do five minutes every day just keep trying to keep on top of those i've also left this cardoon which obviously doesn't look alive now i'm wondering i'm wondering if i need to take these these seeds or not but anyway it's starting to sprout again it's very ornamental and you can eat it we didn't but it's um i'm gonna leave it you can see there that it's starting to come i've just pricked my finger taking that out though and i'm gonna go and get the clippers and i'm gonna take this down i think that might be lemon balm i'm going to check but that bed is looking okay now i've got a little barrow full of the, the leaves that are in there will go on the compost that Jack's done a really good job of um, and the tougher stems I'll just put to the side because I'm going to put those somewhere else and then I think I'm going to go and get something to eat because it's been a long morning and it's actually really 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 warm. Buster what you doing? Uh, off there Red and knee. After doing those gooseberry bushes last week, um, look at this one. How nice! After doing those gooseberry bushes last week, um, I literally looked like I'd been in a fight with a cat. My goodness me, all week my hands have been just awful looking, um, and they're really sore. Come on, boys. Um, so yeah, even, even though I wore a glove on my left hand, which was the hand that was holding them, obviously as I've been cutting, I've been getting scratched and I haven't totally realised at the, at the time. Oh, it just I don't think you can really see now. Where's the camera? You can see there's still a lump on there, but anyway, it was all up my arm. What a mess. So I need to avoid that again because it was really sore. Well, it's Sunday and it is another absolutely glorious day. So in the greenhouse, the, the door's been open and it's 20 degrees. It got up to 30 yesterday um, and the door's open and it's 20. It's lovely. Anyway, I promised to show you how things are getting on in here. So we're going to have a quick look at that now. There's some interesting things that I've noticed actually. So let me show you. Now starting in my favourite corner, this is looking awesome. So I think this is going to be a cauliflower if I remember rightly. The spinach, I'm going to start using this this week. I'm going to be picking these. Um, everything's coming on amazingly. I'm so pleased. Um, interestingly, and I did this before I thought, oh, I should have put it on camera. The kale, this, if you notice, this seems to be getting really tall. And I thought, you're running to seed. And it was. There was a flower head forming in here. So what I'm going to do is pop these outside. Now look at this these that i showed you the other day a flipping white fly or whatever they're called and they are laying their eggs prolifically in there so i'm gonna blow those off um take it outside and water them off and hope that that will help now i've put another one over here because i couldn't understand why the growth was stunted when i talked to you the other day but can you see here how will that zoom in Anyway, I can't get it to focus there. It is literally just ravaged. So I'm going to give that to the chickens and I'm going to get my own back on that one. Anyway, so back over here, that's what's happening with, um, I didn't even know that you could get them at this time of the year, but that just shows you that because it hasn't happened before, I'm assuming that it can't happen. So I'm going to try and rescue this one. We'll keep an eye on this. Come back, focus every week. That's better. I had to turn the camera off and back on. Anyway, they're doing well. Still no sign of these shallots, but these went in a little bit later. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on these. Oh, look, see, they're on there as well on the cauliflower. You can go and flip and get off. So I'll have to have a good check of all of these and see how we're going to deal with those. I don't know if it's just to the effect spinach. Does anybody know? Is it just the younger parts of the plants? That's not them on there. That's just uh, soil compost that's come up. Okay, anyway, we're learning together. Um, this kale here seems to be okay. Not surprisingly, because I don't like the, the curly as much as the, um, as the flat-leaved. 
and look out of nowhere the shallots have just come to life these are going to need watering again they seem to be just taking so much water these ones here are doing really well too um this little cell on its own here has just got some uh, bedfordshire champion um a clump of seeds sown in there and all of the other onions i've been watering these they're drying out really quick so i think this is time to start moving things outside we've got more compost um yeah poor kale plant and look at these peas they're coming up really well that's the felton pea now over here we've got the alderman that was sown on the 28th of january these are coming through nicely um i think these ones were the ones that i did for shoots if i remember rightly we've got the um black currant hardwood cuttings that i took so they're just going to get a little water as well and they'll just sit there in fact they're going to go in the cold frame too over the next week the excitement even more excitement we have all of the seeds that you guys have seen me sown so i'm not going to go over those too much but look look at this hello welcome to the world radish uh, do you know radish are just they're so vigorous they just stop touching them tracy um doing fantastically and then look along here oh hello where did you come from we've got more starting i bet there's one and stop touching tracy and look at this turnip and lettuce wow can you see is that a better angle uh this looks like it needs watering that's um dried out quite quickly but they're radish all of those are radish so i'll get those watered and just check one thing charles dowding says to check for watering which i have noticed myself over the years is lift them up if they don't feel heavy obviously depending on the size um then then they need watering if they feel heavy which these weigh an absolute ton they don't need watering um so that's just a good a good general rule of thumb and up here we've got those red onions that need to go in and we've got lots of garlic that's doing fantastically so all of these are literally going to get in put in this week um or next weekend these radish are probably ready i mean are they can they go out now i'll have to have a look and these lettuce that i thought weren't going to come up they were just having a go slow so these were sown 29th whoops sorry go back so I'm super pleased. We, we've got life. We've got things happening. Um, I, have, ha, ha, I have had the bottom heat on. Now, I know, Maria, we were talking in the comments um, and you were slightly concerned that you didn't have bottom heat. All of these in here, my understanding is, will do okay without bottom heat. If you put them inside on a windowsill, for example, or even just in the greenhouse, covered up and insulated as best you can. They should, none of these except the celery need light to germinate. Um, and the celery is probably a little bit early. I shouldn't have even put that in yet. Where was the celery? Here. Um, but I'd, I'd got carried away there. So Charles doesn't recommend doing that just yet. Um, but yeah, all of these would do fine, I believe, without heat. The tomatoes and the peppers are in the house. The chilies, they need the heat. And that's why I've got them in the house. And I'm keeping them around the heat of the agra as best I can. But give it a go. Hopefully we can still do a sew along together and uh, anybody else that's joining in, that'd be fantastic. So that's where we are with the greenhouse. I'm really, really, really excited. I've obviously sown far too many lettuce seeds and you're looking at those. <laughs> and they're ready to prick out um, shortly this week because again, Charles says, don't wait until you've got more. So the first two leaves that come are a word that I can't pronounce. Is it cotyledon? I think that's right. I think that's right. Well done, Tracy. Um, those two leaves are not true leaves so it's the next set of leaves that are the leaves that will stay with the plant as it grows through it grows up and through its life but charles still only um pricks out when you've only got those two leaves when i used to think they were far too small to prick out he does it at that stage we're following his advice this year for the most part except where i forget and i get carried away and saw too many things um so i'll keep you posted i'm not going to do that just now because i'm busy with other things at the moment and i want to get plenty of time to sit down and actually not feel rushed to do that because i'll be looking to write out more tags and things as well um to make sure that i don't lose <laughs> it's going to happen but to make sure that i don't I, I know what variety i'm putting where basically i'm really keen on doing that this year so that we can say i enjoyed this variety i enjoyed this type it came ready at certain times and things like that i'm going to go and take care of these white fly i'm going to give that kale to the chickens because i'm okay with that because we've got two more there but i want to take care of these guys the one that ran to seed, interestingly, hasn't got any white fly on it that I can see. The one next to it does though. So I'm gonna go and get rid of the little swines somehow. 
it's all happening in the greenhouse literally what day is it it's monday <laughs> i've got the horses out sonic the little pony he is doing the weeding for me he's having a oh no he's finished he's heard his name lydia's in the background if you can see through the filthy windows add that to the jobs list um he's literally i've got a little bit of footage so i'll pop it on now he is just going around pulling out all of the bits of grass and there's no weed killer or anything uh, and there's no weed killer or anything on like that so i'm really pleased because that saves me a job <laughs> that car park is always a nightmare and to be honest the put in all seriousness the horses do go around pulling out the grass and the weeds when they come through so in the summer i'm thinking i might actually just bring them into the car park for an hour or two and they can just go through it for me um there's nothing on there that they can't have and they don't eat the stones they actually really really carefully pull the grass out they don't it's amazing to watch anyway um in the greenhouse this is where i'm talking about it's all happening since yesterday look at this so we only looked at this together yesterday these guys hello radish cherry bell spinach medania all popped up nothing over there they look like they could do with a bit of a water actually they're the peas um i have just had a poke around in here because i was panicking that there was going to be no broad beans and they are on their way and oh wow hello Cole rabbi is up lots of different calabrese is up and even some of these radish where did you come from so i'm going to give you can see there they are dry need a water I'm going to give those a water now i've just also watered these because they were looking slightly dry but i'm really pleased I haven't got time tonight to sow any more seeds because I need to get the horses done and then cook tea because I'm home a little bit late tonight. But I just wanted to check in and show you what's happening. So excited. The other thing, these elephant garlic are looking really good. Um, only one of those bulbs still hasn't come up. Um, I'm not in a rush though. If that one's okay, I've got five there to go in. I am going to hopefully on one of my lunch times at home be able to spend just half an hour putting the onions and garlic in um, that we started in the greenhouse. So I'm thrilled, I'm super excited um, that we're, we're actually getting some action. There's nothing in the, um, no tomatoes or peppers in the house that have come up just yet. So worried a little bit about that, but it's, it's that, you know, gardeners worry. <laughs> Checking them every half an hour or something. So it's a little bit soon just yet, but I need to make sure that they're warm enough and because um, they're not on any heat, they're just in the heat of the house. Although sometimes I'm popping them on the Arga. Um, I can't leave them on there all the time because I'm frightened that they're going to get knocked off just on like a clothes rack on top of it. So I've just left them on the island now. Um, so we'll see how they get on. But it is a little bit soon for those. I know that sometimes they can take a little bit longer to pop up. So we'll see if I get anything by the weekend. If not, I think I'll have another um, last tomato and pepper sowing because it'll be too late for the peppers after that for me, really, because I need such long growing season here in the northeast. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm really pleased. It's super warm in the greenhouse. I have got about half an hour on my lunch. Um, it's 33 degrees in here, but I've just opened the doors because I've got the propagator that I brought over from the house. Stephen kindly got it down for me. And the reason I've got that, even though it's 33 degrees in here now, is because overnight I'm going to be putting the tomatoes out here. So they have germinated in the house super quick. I'm going to get all my dates together. I don't have time now, but I'm going to share those with you because I'm trying to remember when things germinated or make a a record of when things germinated etc from when they um were sown but interestingly look at this let me turn you around because i might drop it if i pick it up with this hand hang on this is what i brought in from the house so you can see they're all pointing that way because they've been at the windowsill and um trying to reach for the light so either i forgot to um sow brandywine yellow or they're dead and the same for the super mama so these seeds haven't come up but everything else and they would have been up by now because they're all tomatoes and everything else is, is well up essentially. So I'm pretty sure they would have been up by now. Needless to say, I'm gonna be pricking these ones out. Where you've got these um, seeds that are still attached, if you just give them a little bit of moisture just off your fingers in some water or in some saliva or something, I know that sounds gross, and just give them a gentle rub, they will come off because sometimes they're a little bit not wanting to let go. They may just come off super easy anyway like those. Just a little tip. I'm going to get on and prick those out now. I'm going to do them into the CD60s, Charles Dowdens, and they're going in the propagator. The risk is during the day that you fry them. Um, so I need to make sure that I've, I've just opened the vents on there and I'm going to, the temperature was just over 30 in there um, and it's 33 in the greenhouse itself. So I'm hoping, well, we'll I've opened the vents. Let's see what happens. Um, during the day should be okay when the sun's out, but it's really the night time that I've got to take control of because if I forget to put the propagator on 
or I don't close the vents or whatever, whatever, and it gets below freezing, the little tomatoes might not make it. And we, we don't have any time for that in our lives this time. We don't want to be replanting if we don't have to. What a mess it is in here. Who did this? It really is super warm and I've got my winter jumper on because it was so cold this morning. Anyway, this is where I've got to. I thought I'd just show you halfway through. I'm literally taking them from the clumps, the seed tray that they're in and putting them individually into the cells um, and burying as deep as possible. So you can see some of them had shorter stems than others and literally burying them as little as I can, as deep as I can, sorry. Um, this one was quite a, a tall guy um, and there just wasn't enough cell to bury them that deep. But these all root and become really strong. And if I have to, individually, because the benefit of these cells is they've got really big um, holes on the bottom so you can just shove your finger up and they're so much easier to get out individually without um, disrupting the other plants. Or the other seedlings so if these guys that are a little bit bigger need to come out sooner i'll just pop them on into another pot but uh, hopefully it should all be about the same time but um stephen came in for a chat <laughs> at about this point so these two here may be sun gold but i think i've got that right it doesn't really matter um at the moment we've got our bloody butcher Cocktail crush, there's only four cocktail crush, quite a few bloody butchers. Um, two country taste made it. I did put three in. Oh, there's a huge bee there, can you see? Hello, bee. That looks like a queen bee. Queen bumblebee, please don't come in. Okay, she's gone. Um, Gardener's Delight here. This is up to this one and potentially these two. I'm on sun gold now. I'll keep going with these, which is just this little tray here. And then or this little line rather. And then the last one is the Sam Marzano, which I clearly got trigger happy with, but we'll get those in now. That's where I've got to. I've got one line left. I'm just gonna leave these like this because that compost is actually quite moist. It doesn't look it on the top, but it's, um, this is it here. And it really was so i'm going, I'm not going to water them yet i've got another line to fit to finish at the end there i'll do that after work um these are all the spare san marzano's definitely had a field day putting those in didn't i so i think i'll leave them for now it's going to be okay in, in the greenhouse um until at least the sun goes down hopefully and then we'll see see which ones i decide to put in tonight but i've got more in the house the other thing i thought i would show you just quickly look these guys are making a an appearance so I'm pleased about that because I did wonder if they were just, um, were dead. <laughs> but no, all seems good. There's quite a lot of things here now that are catching up. So we'll have a good catch up on those when, um, when I get a bit more time, to be honest. Well, I'm not really sure where the rest of this week has gone, but we're coming back around rapidly to another weekend. So I just thought I'd quickly show you in the greenhouse, um, the tomatoes are now in the propagator. They are flying up. I didn't get to do the other row that I wanted to do, so they're not planted just yet, but that's fine. I'm gonna get that done today along with a lot of other things, um, which I'll show you on the next video. Let's have a quick look. I'm not gonna open it because I don't want the heat to come out, but you can see the condensation in there, the moisture. So then they should be damp enough, um, but they are, can you see there? They are flying up. They're coming up really quickly. I'm just a bit worried they're going to need potting on again too soon. But anyway, that's what they are for now. All of this stuff in the next video, you're going to see me starting to get these out and in the ground, weather allowing, because it's been a little bit more miserable than it has been. And what I'm going to do is start with um, the garlic and the onions and get those in first. The radish after that and then everything else. It's far too soon really for everything else to be going out. The broad beans, they can go out next probably, but they're not up enough. They're literally just poking their heads through the soil. Um, oh look, and the peas have started to come through as well. Anyway, we're going to have a proper catch up on all of those. I'll do that in the next video because for now, I just wanted to let you know the seed sowing and the pricking out is going well, but we're concentrating on tomatoes. I am going to get jalapenos. Um, well, it'll be for the next video for the end of the week um, because I really want to be growing those this year, especially with all the food shortages. What's that all about? And that leads me into sort of seasonal growing and eating and do we need blueberries in December or February? All of those kind of things. Please let me know your thoughts on that because it's something that I grapple with as a gardener and as a smallholder all the time. I'd love to say I only eat seasonally, but then I like to have berries because they are so good for you all year round. And we can't grow or we don't, we could. We don't grow enough yet to sustain ourselves all year round. So in the winter, what fruit do you eat that's, um, 
that we grow locally you know what do you guys do or what do you hear of or what do you aspire to do but anyway let me know i go off on one you know what i'm like i hope you've enjoyed this week this week's video and i hope you join me next week please give us a thumbs up um because it really helps and also leave us a comment i love to hear from people and you guys have been interacting so much more and i think it's fantastic it's brilliant i love seeing all the names i'm familiar with most of you guys um and especially when you catch up with me on instagram and all that good stuff too right i'm waffling as always catch you later bye